President Obama is now committed to destroy himself, his presidency, and the United States by demanding another bailout of the British financial system in the form of QE3. He's willing to risk it all in order to raise the debt ceiling of the country, which means stealing from Americans, from their social security, from their health care, from their states, in order to funnel liquidity into the bankrupt transatlantic monetarist system. But this is not a monetary decision. President Obama, in calling for a policy of QE3, will be responsible for mass murder. We highlight the case of the Horn of Africa. This week, a UN report made public that there are 12 million people in East Africa that are now in immediate danger of starvation. The immediate threat comes from a severe drought reported as being the worst since the 1950s in the southern parts of Ethiopia, northern Kenya, Somalia, and parts of Djibouti. Right now, there is a massive influx of refugees to the Kenyan refugee camp, Dadab, from these countries. The number of Somalis alone finding refuge in Kenya and Ethiopia is estimated at 750,000. The Dadaab refugee camp in Kenya, which was constructed 20 years ago for 90,000 people, today is home for 440,000 people. The camp is operating at over 400% of its capacity. But that isn't even the worst part. The families fleeing to the camps are literally walking or running for days, and by the time they arrive, they are severely malnourished. Somalis are arriving at Dadaab with global acute malnutrition rates of 30 to 40 percent. This percentage is more than double the World Health Organization's emergency threshold of 15 percent. Severe acute malnutrition rates of 23 percent which is eight times higher than the two to three percent, which is considered alarming. Most alarming are reports that more children have died in the first three months of 2011 in feeding centers than died in all of 2010, because by the time the children reach the camps, they are so severely malnourished that there is nothing that can be done to save them. With overcrowded camps full of malnourished people with compromised immune systems, there will be pandemic disease breakouts. As of now, 5 million people are at risk of cholera in the drought region, where the conditions are totally unsanitary. Cholera causes quick and severe dehydration leading to death if not treated quickly and precisely. But more than one disease will take advantage of these conditions. Malaria is breaking out as well. The World Health Organization states that 8.8 .8 million people are at risk of malaria in the region, and those diseases are spreading. Ethiopian health officials claim that there are cases all over. It is not confined to the refugees. They are also on the lookout for polio and measles. Put this magnitude of people into perspective. 12 to 13 million people is almost two times as many people that were officially killed in the concentration camps of Hitler. This is the approximate size of modern day Los Angeles. Is this the result of a natural disaster? Is this the bad luck of the African people? Not at all. This is the calculated effect of British imperialism. Prince Philip has been the leading figurehead for the ridiculous claim that the world is overpopulated. He played a key role in the founding of the World Wildlife Foundation and Greenpeace, committed to reducing the spread of technological progress of mankind, especially in underdeveloped nations rich in natural resources. According to the ideology of the British oligarchy, these nations should have no rights to the resources within their boundaries because all the resources should belong to the empire. In their limited math, if these nations do start growing their populations, more of their resources will be taken up with caring for their people, and less will be available to the empire. It is this most backwards type of self-interest which drives the movement behind depopulation, commonly known as the Green Movement. 
There has been a direct and indirect targeting of nations to control them politically, financially, and socially. The entire continent of Africa has been targeted for centuries, but also much more recently. In 1974, the British agent Henry Kissinger pushed through NSSM 200. In it, 13 developing nations were selected for annihilation. In order to assist the development of major countries and to maximize progress towards population stability, primary emphasis would be placed on the largest and fastest growing developing countries where the imbalance between growing numbers and development potential most seriously risks instability, unrest, and international tensions. These countries are India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nigeria, Mexico, Indonesia, Brazil, the Philippines, Thailand, Egypt, Turkey, Ethiopia, and Colombia. Rapid population growth adversely affects every aspect of economic and social progress in developing countries. Is there any solid evidence for this? No. But if you couple it with the outlook which has been made pervasive in our culture today, that we are overpopulated and that technology is destroying our planet, then it becomes acceptable to think that the planet might be better off without all those people. The environmentalist movement has created a moral justification for turning a blind eye to the very old policy of colonialism. There is no truth behind the green movement at all. Reality is actually quite the opposite. The planet has a history of evolution which completely contradicts the claim that there are a limited amount of resources. The history of man demonstrates that resources are infinite through the development of science. Look at the history of the development of agriculture and of energy production as immediate examples. We now stand on the edge of a nuclear renaissance. This type of discovery and its applications would allow mankind to have almost total control over its destiny. There is no proof that there is any natural limit to this road of improvement. But there is a limit, the artificial policy of colonialism and depopulation. What the Green Movement is really saying is that they hate man and everything that mankind is capable of doing. This is directly counter to the tradition and intention of the United States, which was exemplified in the 20th century by Presidents Roosevelt and Kennedy. They both shared a commitment to the development of the third world nations through industrialization. They shared the drive that the United States would be the leader in the world in pushing to improve its capabilities, the most obvious example of which is the manned space program. But they also shared a commitment to end imperialism and in fostering progress in nations which had been victims of previous imperialism. Roosevelt laid out the potential for Africa specifically if provided with irrigation. And Kennedy pioneered programs like the Peace Corps. This is not all ancient history. The continuation of these policies exists today. As part of Nawapa, the entire Nile system can be updated to turn the areas of drought into the most agriculturally productive land in the world. The Nile is potentially a transformative agent in itself. It flows 4,000 miles into the Mediterranean Sea from points at Lake Victoria, Sudan, and Ethiopia. Through harnessing of the Nile's power, the land available for food production would increase 100-fold from 2 million acres to 200 million acres available in Sudan. The estimated amount of people who could be fed off of this is over 1 billion. Coupled with the Transaqua program's filling of Lake Chad, discussed on our site, this irrigation would be a catalyst in the overall development of the region, from a land of drought and suffering into a modern-day paradise. The reality of the situation is that if this transformation is to be fulfilled, Africa needs more people. They aren't overpopulated. They are actually underpopulated. This brings us back to the real issue in the debate over the debt ceiling and QE3. The real threat is hyperinflation. 
If we continue the bailout, which means stealing from Americans, our currency will collapse. If that happens, there will be no way that we can be able to extend credit to Africa that will be necessary in order for Nawapa or Transaqua or any type of development. Under hyperinflation, we won't even be able to support our own population's living standards, as is currently being witnessed. A QE3 would hijack the credit that would go to fulfilling mankind's anti-entropic mission into an imperial monetary system which has no consequence nor consideration for the improvement of the species at all. In fact, it's the same system which has put Africa in the current plight that they are in. Obviously, President Obama has already demonstrated that he has no qualms with doing this. He is promoting the same British system in the United States that is destroying Africa, and he hasn't hesitated in sacrificing Americans to the very same monetary interests.